We moved into our home in 2019 and immediately started making some improvements and updates to this 1950s fixer upper. Join me today as I've compiled four years of fixing up our home. I'll never forget when we found this property and toured it, my husband made the comment, well, we won't be buying that because there's way too much work that needs to be done. And a few months later, we signed the papers and bought this property knowing we were going to have to fix up every single portion of this home and property to make it functional for us to live in. Right off the bat, we had to do quite a few things that we didn't think we would have to do right away, which was repipe the entire home. We had to get a new roof and we had to replace the water heater. We had to do a lot of rewiring and fixing the electrical, which was not done properly. So right off the bat, we started with a lot of projects that we thought we could wait on and do later on. Then we decided to start making the kitchen more functional. Our long-term plan with the kitchen is to completely gut it, rip everything out, and put it into a better layout that functions better with this home. But because we are paying for everything as we go working on these projects, we're not taking out any loans, and we are definitely not going into debt for the projects we're doing on this house. So we're going to live with what we have and just make it work for us in the best way possible. This old linoleum was horrible and really dirty. You could not get it clean. So we ended up relaying new linoleum over the top of this. We also took out a dysfunctional dishwasher and my husband built a cupboard in its place. These small changes have made this kitchen work for us for the time being. We also painted all the cupboards with just a bright white paint. And I've had comments in the past, why did we paint the beautiful wood? The wood is horrible. It is plywood and it has been painted many times over the years and people have stripped it and repainted it. And if you looked up close, it was in terrible condition. So the white paint just made it look a lot fresher and brighter in there and cleaned it up a lot. We also have a 1950s kitchen with mint and yellow tile, which is a lot of fun. So I decided to lean in to those colors and paint a portion of the kitchen mint. And it just ties the whole thing together and makes it a fun place to cook and hang out in. We also added some beadboard for some detail because why not make something beautiful in the meantime, before you're going to completely redo it, we decided to lean into the 1950s vibe since that's what we had to work with. There was a time when we had a microwave on our counter. We decided to put in a hanging microwave because this solved two problems for us. We really didn't have the space for a microwave on our counter and also it gave us a fan to suck all the smell out when we're cooking. So this solved two problems and it made it so much more functional in here to have the microwave wave up on the wall and out of the way. One day I was standing in the kitchen and analyzing how it was laid out and I started to think that the far end of our kitchen was not being utilized very well. We had the fridge at the very end and we had some random little tables and things and that's when it hit me that we could put some cupboards at the end of this kitchen and have so much more workable space. I asked my husband if he could make me some inexpensive shelves and he said sure and this is just so I could get some stuff up out of the way but also make this space beautiful in my eyes because while we are saving up money for our final kitchen, it is so important for me to have a space that I feel is beautiful to work in and enjoy. When it came to our bedroom, you would not believe what the walls looked like. They had painted some sort of brown sponge paint over all the walls, which was very odd. This room also had one of the windows covered up with a shelf when we first moved in here. So we took all that down and just made it as nice as we could without really doing any renovations. We added curtains, cleaned the whole room up, painted it, and we still have plans to do more. But in the meantime, we added some bead 
beadboard to the wall and we also painted the top of the wall a really pretty gray color. It's called Agreeable Gray in case you're interested. We also decided to revamp our side tables for fun. We decided a pop of color would be great in here since everything else was pretty neutral. We went with teal and then we sanded down the top and stained it a light white color. It all came together to look really nice, at least in our eyes. We absolutely love this space now. Even my husband will comment that he really enjoys being in this room and that it feels calm and relaxing overall. We do have some future plans to replace the windows in this room and make the closet more functional, but that will come in time. One of the things I've learned through my last eight years of home ownership is that it is very important to make your home as enjoyable as possible in the moment. Even if you don't have the money to do the exact project you wanna do, it's important to make it feel comfortable for yourself in the moment you're in now. So moving on to our living room, we had this extremely weird closet that looked like a bedroom closet in the middle of our living room. And this bothered my husband way more than it bothered me, but he had this vision to rip that out and make a wall where we could hang our television and have a few shelves with a pocket door that would block out all the noise from the TV and have it quiet where there's a bedroom behind that wall. So we actually built the wall into the room a little bit so we could have room for the pocket door and a lot of insulation so it could be quiet in that room. And uh, the lights work with just clapping, so. Just kidding, it's a remote. So that, that way when people ever come over to our house, we can really impress them and like, well, these people are so cool. I'm like, I know. In the 1970s, someone had added on to this house, which made this layout very funky. This room right here is attached to our kitchen and there's this window here that we decided should be a door. It just makes sense to walk out the kitchen and right out into the patio rather than through the living room to get to the patio. So we decided to rip this window out and put in a door. My husband Grant is a Finnish carpenter, which is why it makes it so easy for him to do a lot of these projects because he has the knowledge and <laughs> the skill set behind him to do this. So we took out this window and we put in the door. It's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. It's making it look very fast in this video, but this was probably about two weeks of work on this door. And then we decided to make this little area kind of a transitional sitting room slash walkthrough hall area. We did add some curtains and a rug. One of the issues in our house, I don't know if it's being more minimal, is an echo. So we do try to dampen that echo by adding curtains and rugs whenever we can. And then we added this bench, which added some storage and also a place to sit. Eventually, this area will become part of our kitchen. The kitchen will be extended into this area, so it will all make sense eventually, but we did have to do something with this area because it was just empty, and we didn't want to fill it with uh, another table or furniture because no one really hangs out in this area. It's more of a walkthrough. At the beginning of 2022, we decided to start on the second portion of our living room. So we had already done the wall with the TV on it, but we needed to redo these windows because they were falling apart. The inner part was actually hanging down in the window and we wanted to get rid of this huge sliding door. That sliding door was a huge piece of glass from the 1970s very dangerous. If something were to hit that, it would break into large pieces and someone could get very hurt. That was a real worrisome thing for me having kids and that glass there. So we replaced that with some windows. We no longer wanted anyone walking through our living room to get out into the patio since we added that other door. Since we were already doing construction, my husband decided to rip down all of the drywall inside the room as well. Then we could insulate properly since this home is not insulated at all. And between the insulation we added into these walls 
panels and the new windows being insulated. This has helped so much with keeping our house cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. The only thing left to do is replace the floor eventually, which we will do when we have the time and money. When we moved in here, the carpet in this one area was horrible. There were holes in the wall. So we patched all of that, ripped out the carpet and replaced it, made this our boys room where we added some bunk beds recently and some tables from Ikea for them to do their homework on. And this room is beautiful now. I feel the only thing we need to do is replace some of the windows. The moment we moved in, we started a little bit of demo on this bathroom. So this is what the bathroom looks like currently, right after we moved in. The only new thing is we put this light fixture up, but this is all gonna go. Um, linoleum floor, this was a wall heater, and then this is the funky bath. It's all gonna go, and we're gonna take the window out, so it'll look completely different in here. Grant thought he would start the demo, but then it turns out that the pipes under here are completely corroded to where he can't even turn the water off to start the demo. Hey, the wall. All leaking behind there. It's condensation, it's not leaking. Particle board with tile on it. And then we stopped and we haven't used this bathroom for three years straight. This week we had it completely demoed. There was no support under where the bath was, so we had to add a huge support beam. That way it could support the weight of the tub and the shower. The floor was literally collapsing. So that was something that was very important to fix. Then we had the plumbers come in and we had them add the tub that we bought. We picked out some gray tile, surprise, surprise. We always go with gray. Then we made sure to insulate the walls really well. And by we, I mean Grant is doing the majority of this work. We started in May. I'm putting the timestamps because I wanna show you how long this project actually took us to do, considering we both work full time, we have kids and we have our normal life. So we do this in our extra time. We're replacing the window. We wanted to have the most insulation possible and the window was in terrible condition. Then of course, we're just painting and we're going to be tiling. Grant had never tiled before, so there was a huge learning curve with this. We decided to just take our time and do it ourselves. We also had family staying with us when all this was going on, so we could not put all of our energy to this project, but we decided that it was okay to just work on it when we could because, hey, we hadn't been using this bathroom for three years anyways, so a little bit of time here and there was better than nothing. We wanted to go with shiplap on the wall for some details detail because this is such a small bathroom. We don't want to have a lot of decorations. So shiplap was a great way to add some texture to the wall. And finally, come December, at the end of the year, we finished this bathroom. We added some hooks behind the door. Grant made this cupboard. We added some handles and some quartz countertop. We already had this light fixture. We added the mirror and that is that. We love the way this turned out and more than anything, we love having a bathroom to use in our home. This is the biggest bathroom, so we are so happy and grateful to have this to use and have it finished. During all the craziness of the bathroom renovation, we ended up having to get a new AC and heater unit because ours was just not working properly. But you can see how much better this looks to have it not on the roof anymore. And that window on the left still needs to be replaced as you can see. When we moved in here, this is what our backyard looked like. It was a blank canvas so we could do whatever we wanted with it. This was back in 2019, right after we moved in here. We started working on it right away just to make it fun and functional and a nice place to hang out in. Also, my husband and I and my mom comes over. We all love working in the backyard, working in the garden and growing vegetables and all of that. So while we do have lots of plans, we've already started doing what we can with what we have to make it a fun place to hang out in. Gardening is such a rewarding task. My mom and I made these raised garden beds out of some wood. It was a very simple project that allowed us to add some more dirt so we could plant and get the garden going. It was great to plant some stuff even though we didn't really have a plan and see what we could grow. And we had such a fun time doing this and we are learning as we go and 
trying to improve in the years to come. We woke up one morning to our tree looking like this. The ficus tree actually blew down in a huge storm that we had and it took down our fence. On the bright side, we were now able to fix the fence that needed to be fixed anyways and rethink our backyard to become more drought tolerant and get rid of the things that take up too much water since we do live in Southern California. We are currently coming up with a plan where we are getting rid of all of our grass, but in the meantime, all the grass is dead because we had such a warm summer with water restrictions. Now I'm just ripping off some of the outdoor stuff because we had our house painted. The frame on this window out here was actually indoor material, not made for outside. So those were the type of things that we were ripping down this gate had to go, it never shut properly, plus we did not like the chain link. So we were just taking down all the things that needed to be removed so we could have the painters come. We did contemplate painting the house ourselves, but it just did not make sense considering the time and energy it would take. And we wanted to get that completed before the rainy season set in. We were removing all the gutters and we did have all of the gutters replaced. Also, there was this very odd plastic fence at our front door that I had been wanting to get rid of forever. So we ripped that out and we do have plans to make a deck out front there. My husband also replaced these pillars out here because they were rotted. So he just put in new ones. So when they were painted, it would all function properly. We also went with a drought tolerant landscape in the little front area here. The inspiration were these pots with with some succulents in there. And I have to say this was one of the best decisions we made because it little, needs very little water and it looks great. Even though we do get a few weeds popping up here and there, it looks great most of the year. If you don't have a lot of money, definitely painting and a little bit of landscaping can transform the way a space feels and looks. This paint job made our home look so much better. It just cleaned everything up and just transformed the front of our home. We also decided to add a fence along the very front of our yard. Grant has detailed videos on almost every one of these projects over on his channel, Wood Glue. So I will link his channel down below in case you're interested in more detailed information on these projects. We are always working on our home, and this is a project we've been thinking about doing for quite a while, pretty much since we moved in here. With every project we do on our home, the goal is to always make this house more appealing, more functional, simplified, and organized. We're going to put a barn door, sliding door right here, because all of the bedrooms are behind this hall right here. And so if we wanna have it quiet from the living room, it would be nice to have a door here. We're gonna start by ripping this casing off and Grant is going to possibly make this a little bit wider and then we'll have to redecorate this whole area. We are working on two projects at the same time now. So we're doing the barn door here and then in my office we are doing a feature wall with some beadboard and some paint. We've decided to redo this wall. Both of these projects we're jumping into are somewhat quick projects so we decided to do them at the same time. We decided to also enlarge this doorway so it feels less like a regular doorway and more like an entryway. How much bigger is it than it was? Three inches. A lot of work for three inches. <laughs> three inches is a lot. Goes a long way. Three years ago when we moved in here, I put this sticky, kind of a sticker wallpaper up from Amazon. I've loved it. It's actually worked really well and it was relatively easy to yeah. put up. Mm -hmm. But now we're going with something more permanent and it's gonna be a feature wall. Cause it is starting to peel at the top a little bit. Yeah. Let's see how easy this is gonna 
Oh, don't let it rip. It let it rip. Oh. Okay. Oh. Wow, it's actually still really sticky. Oh God. Let me see. Surprise. Oh no. Wait. I have an idea. Let's stop this. Okay. We're gonna go get the hair black dryer. And we're gonna heat oh, it that's up. A good idea. And this is like sticker. Oh my gosh, it's shredding. It would be easier if you have the extension cord. <laughs> so hard to get the extension cord out. That's stuck on there. That's my point. We got the first strip. Finally, the paper started coming off in big chunks and before we knew it, all of it was off the wall and we could go on with our next step. My mom did mention that this was way easier to take off than traditional wallpaper, so she said that getting this kind was a good choice. See that? I think all that was from that really bad painter. Yeah. Just or the initial people in the 70s who redid all this that stuff. That put that stuff on that ceiling. They just let it go everywhere. Yeah. What my mom and I are talking about here is our home was originally built in the 1950s, but at some point in the 1970s, someone came in and did some fixing up in this home. My husband, being a Finnish carpenter, has told me that the renovations they did were absolutely horrible and they had no idea what they were doing. But they did add an additional living room and bedroom and bathroom to the back of this house, which we love. But as we're making our renovations, we are realizing that nothing was done right and up to any kind of standards. While we are doing a lot of cosmetic updates in this home, we are also having to do a lot of structural updates as well. The floors are unlevel and things, as I mentioned, were just not done correctly. Our goal is to fix all these problematic areas as well as make this home beautiful in a way that we will really enjoy for the long haul. Another thing we are doing is with every project, Grant is actually teaching me and the boys how to do a lot of this stuff, which makes it a lot more fun that we can all get involved. And who knows, maybe someday I'll be a finished carpenter. Doubt it though. No, I saw when I was looking up design ideas that some people had it like, I don't know if it was necessarily beadboard. Oh, look who's here. The kids are back. Ah! Came up to here and then they had a ledge. Yeah. It looked kind of cool. With all of these projects, it just takes a lot of time. The good thing is we can work together as a family and spend quality time together as we're still getting some stuff done and make it fun when we can. Whenever I watch a project channel on TV like HGTV, they show it happening so quickly and that is not a reality. The reality is that it takes a lot of time, energy, and even money to make these projects happen. He's telling me how facial recognition won't work if you make a weird face. Right, if you stick your jaw out, you can't recognize you. No one knows who you are now. <laughs> We're heading to Contractor's Warehouse to look for the barn door, a hanging door. It won't look like a barn door. There's no animals in there. At all. And we're gonna look for the hardware to hang it. Unfortunately, we did not find the barn door. So I think we're gonna have to go another time to Ganal. Maybe Grant will go one day. Ganali, bro. And try to find the barn door and the hardware. I'll look online too. Drive much? Province blue bare paint from Home Depot and then toasty gray on the top. We Today's the day we finish this wall. It's gonna happen. Grant is gonna show me how to caulk. Caulk. How do you say it? Angle here. Okay. So yeah, I'd say come in from more of the angle, like that. So yeah, I keep saying the same thing and keep my thing. <laughs> I don't know. Come in from the angle, or like I'd come in from this angle actually. So you're going like this. I'm saying well, like I'm this. trying to get it in the camera. Yeah. So start like this. Let's try it. Okay. All right. So like this. 
There is a major learning curve to a lot of these things that Grant does really quickly and easily, but I think with time I will pick up how to do all the caulking and using the nail gun and all those sort of things. In the history of projects that we've done together, these two projects actually did not take that long. Normally a project can take months on end of work. These were kind of going in the background of our lives. So as we were doing our normal routine, we would just work on it on the nights and weekends, which is how we do most projects. But this one did seem to go a little bit faster than normal. Oh. We ordered the hardware off Amazon and we went with silver because everything in our house is light white brush and nickel. brush nickel, silver, whatever, brush nickel, not black in other words. We looked for white, it was almost impossible to find white and it looked kind of cruddy. But anyhow, at least the silver won't be as dark as if we had black. And the whole thing now I'm trying to figure out is how I'm going to design this wall to make sense with the door open or shut. So we're gonna have to figure that out as well. How long do you think it'll take once we get all the hardware and everything to make the whole? Probably about that long. Like a few days or something? Yeah, whatever. All right. When it came to finishing this accent wall in my office, I feel this took the longest time. I kept getting interrupted with life as we know it. People were getting sick and then getting better and it just felt like the painting of this project did take a little bit longer than I expected. But I was super happy with the colors I picked out. I think it brought a lot of warmth to this room and I was really happy once it was done. I still have bigger plans for my office. I would like to get two chairs where my mom and I can sit and do our members only videos. And then I decided I didn't want this mirror behind my desk anymore. So I will be switching more things around in here. I'm ready. She's here. Oh, this could be a pointer. Here we go. So I've taken this painting from in the living room. I've put it here and grandma said no on that. So we're gonna get bigger, wider. Bigger, wider. You know, the whole thing is, maybe it should hang right here, but then you no, have those the tools. whole thing is. You gotta cover <laughs> up those screws. Once this large mirror was gone, I decided I wanted to do a big painting with just flowers, something somewhat abstract and fun. And I wanna get more into painting again. So I just have been spending my time on this painting. It is not done at all, but I wanted to get it started so I would have something to put up there in the meantime and work on it when I get an extra moment here and there. At this point, the barn door really started to come together. We had all the pieces we needed, but as I mentioned, life was still going on, so we did plant two trees out in our front yard. We wanna get a lot of our yard going. We've started working on that since this project had finished, and we wanna get things planted so they can start to grow and we have some shade eventually at this house. Once the barn door went in, I was convinced I was going to have to possibly buy some stuff for this room since we took down the large mirror that would no longer fit in this area on this one wall with the barn door. And I also had a buffet there previously that we had to move. I was thinking that I would have to purchase something for this wall, but then it dawned on me that we had Grant's art he had done a long time ago saved under our bed when we had done our living room. We weren't sure where we wanted to hang it. This was the perfect opportunity to hang up his beautiful art he had done a few years ago on this wall next to the barn door. So instead of buying something, I actually surprised myself by decluttering more. I decluttered the big mirror that was on that wall and I also decluttered the small dark brown nesting tables that we were no longer using. It was so fun to watch these two projects come together in the end. 
to make our home more functional and more of our style of how we want it, transforming this house that we bought into a home that we truly adore and have our exact style that we really like. I'm trying to get everything feeling much more cozy in here, but also using our art that we've made and things that we've gathered along the way that we really truly enjoy to look at up on our walls. barn door not only helped with muffling the noise when we want to be in our bedroom or in our office but it also helped us to be inspired to simplify this room even further our backyard was a blank slate of grass and a ficus tree. In 2022, we had a huge windstorm that took out our ficus tree. We wanted to give some thought to what we wanted to do with this backyard. So in February, 2023, we decided to start working on transforming our backyard. We do live in Southern California and we wanted our backyard to be drought tolerant and get rid of all the grass. We just found it was too much work to try to keep grass alive all year long. Some other goals were to make our backyard into an extra living space because we do have good weather most of the year. We wanted this to be a place where we could eat outside and hang out. We also wanted to make sure we had drainage because we do not have any drains out here. So we decided to make some French drains so all the water could drain away in winter when we get the majority of our rain. We also decided to take our time and do all the work ourselves so we can make our backyard exactly how we wanted, but also save money. And we consider this sort of a therapy to work on our home and it's something fun that we can all do together. So here they've just dug a hole and they are going to put the drain along this concrete walkway here. And my husband did use a sock drain. I don't have footage of that, but he buried that under the gravel. So when it does rain, all the water can drain away from our house. Now Grant is just putting in a footing for the pergola that we ordered. And he said that he put in a proper footing so he could build a wood pergola someday. But we ordered one off of Wayfair and I can link everything down below. It was very affordable. Our goal was just to get some shade out here because six months or maybe nine months out of the year, we get a lot of sun and we just need some shade. And you'll see, as the video progresses, we also planted two trees, but of course it's gonna take a while before we can get some shade from those trees. So we wanted shade right away so we could start using this backyard, eating out here and enjoying this outdoor space. Two months into this project and finally Grant was starting to lay the tiles where we would put the pergola and it was just in time because spring was rolling in and the weather was getting really nice, switching from rainy and cold to very enjoyable. And as soon as he had all of this laid out, we started eating out here all the time, every dinner. I'm screeding out the sand. And of course, not everything goes as smoothly as it looks in a video. There was a week where Grant had to take off working because he pulled his back. We also had a lot of rain in this time where we would have to stop for quite a few days at a time. So that all added into this project taking longer as well as living our normal lives and working full-time jobs. This was all done on nights and weekends. Projects don't always go as planned either. This little white rock was a regrettable decision. It was something that just did not seem to go once it was put in. And also as we walked over it, it got kicked everywhere. So we had to come up with a solution for this problem, which we do solve later in the video. 
but we had to actually vacuum out all of that little white rock and we chose something else, which I will get into. But now we are starting to build the pergola, which was pretty simple. It did not take a lot of time, but we did need all hands on deck to hold it up at different points when we were putting it together. We also mapped out the path from where we would have the pergola to the rest of the yard because again, we decided we did not want any grass and we also did not want to have fake grass because that also has its own upkeep that we didn't want to deal with. This structure took us about an hour and a half to put together. It was very simple following the directions and it really helps us achieve what we want to, which is just to give us some shade, but we can also open the top. So when it is raining or when it is cool out and we don't need to have the cover, we don't need to have it shut. We can open it very easily. And we've been using this for about four months now, and it's really working great. We love it. And it's just such a great place to spend time, enjoy our family and hang out. Because if you've ever lived or visited Southern California, we live inland and it can get extremely hot. We purchased some drought tolerant plants and I am just laying them out where I think they should be along this fence line. We decided to put the taller plants at the back so they can grow really big and block this fence here. And then we're gonna move that lower plant that's gonna stay low to a different location where it can be reused. And then we're putting all the plants that stay low to the ground but grow wide at the front. So we just wanna cover this with plants completely and we're also using a weed cloth underneath so that way we won't have weeds coming through and hopefully we won't have to water that often. Most of these plants said one to two times a week watering. And it's incredible how these filled in just by the end of this video. I can't even believe the before and after of this. And what we did was we decided to start isolating certain areas. So we decided to work on this one side, get this completely done before moving on to the next section. So we could feel that sense of accomplishment and also see that we were getting this project done. I have another video that I will link down below showing all the projects we've done on our home so far, transforming it from a 1950s fixer upper into a really cozy warm home. So I will link that for you to watch if you're interested. And we are using bark here to cover the weed cloth. But as you'll see at the end of this video, these plants have completely taken over and filled in this area, which is exactly what we wanted. And we are also trying to be very aware of drainage. So you can see here, we have uh, dug down an area and we're filling it with rock. So when it does rain, there will be a place for the water to be able to drain into. One of the best things about working outside on this backyard this year has just been getting everyone outside and working together. So whenever possible, we try to include our children in what we are doing to not only teach them, but also give them something to do and let them have fun in the process. And my one son just loved getting involved in everything. He was helping to set out the rocks, which would be the line for where the DG would go up to and the bar Mark would also meet. And then now my husband and my son are pouring some concrete steps in place. He said that this would be the cheapest, easiest way to go. And it worked out wonderfully. This is such a great path leading from our back door out into the yard and into that seating area where the pergola is. He decided to use an orange brown color to add to make this concrete step look more natural. And I have to say it looks beautiful mixed with the DG around it being the same color with the natural rock. It came out great and worked perfectly to pour it in place. When picking out what furniture we would have in our seating area, we did have a little bit of a debacle where my mom and I bought something from Lowe's and brought it home. It was so terrible that we took it back 
it was the worst quality for still a pretty high price and that's when we started to search around and we found this really high quality furniture from costco it was about the same price as the lowe's furniture but this furniture was way better you could tell the moment you sat on it that it was going to last and it was going to stand up to the elements so we put that together and that's when we were really able to start hanging out out here we had a comfortable place to sit and we also brought our table out so we could start having meals out here we're not sure if we're going to get another table eventually so we're just keeping it open for now now we're working on our three garden beds that we have my mom and i made these three garden beds a few years ago and every spring we throw some seeds in there and we're always amazed at what grows we have zucchini for months on end we're also growing red bell peppers and we have some squash carrots and cilantro we're growing mint, which we can't even stop that from growing. It's taken over. And every year we try something new. We have some lettuce growing this year and we have cabbage. It's just fun to see what we can grow. And that is one of my goals over the next few years is I want to grow more of our own food. And living in Southern California, I think we can actually grow a lot more year round. I need to do more research on that and look into it. But that is one of my major goals coming up here is to grow more of our own food. The trees that we planted are an orange tree, a lemon tree, and in the front, we planted an avocado tree and a lime tree. We just want to be able to grow as much food as we can just to help our carbon footprint. And also it's really fun to watch things grow and get to make food from what we've grown in our own backyard. As this project progressed over the last few months, we started to call my husband Rock Man because he was getting so much rock delivered, but we were able to use a lot of the things we already had on this property. So all these pavers were in our front yard and on our side yard when we moved in here. So we gathered everything into one place to bring it together and make this path from things we already had, which saved us a lot of money because this would have cost quite a lot to get all of these pavers in different sizes and shapes and he just cut them down to fit where they needed and then added rocks in between and concreted the whole thing down which is fine because we know we want this path to be a permanent path and of course as he always mentions is nothing is permanent if we decide to change everything someday we can but we have a pretty good idea that we want our yard to be very structured and just set up so over time we can plant different things and change things out but have the general setup now we moved on to fixing some of the paths that my mom and i had just thrown some pavers down between the garden beds and they weren't even there was no dg under them just weeds we just threw something down so we could walk on it and didn't have to walk in mud and my husband said, let's pull that up, let's do it right. And he is right for saying that. So he took the time to actually lay out a flat foundation to put the pavers back down on. So that way we don't have as many weeds coming through. And it's also just a very straight path to walk on. People won't be tripping on it like we were before. And then we decided to plant an orange tree this was extremely hard to find because in our area there has been a disease on all of the orange trees so they weren't selling very many my mom called around and she was able to find this orange tree so we're just moving some dirt out of the way and we're moving it to the front yard where we're going to do some other work in the future so make sure you're subscribed because i will be having more before and after videos on our yard and our home but we're digging a large hole we did all the research on the proper way to plant this orange tree with the right type of nutrients it needs and the right type of soil so we're doing that here and even though it was cold and raining on this day we decided to get this orange tree in the ground 
before anyone could make any comments on it because we wanted to work on the backyard as well as Grant. So we got it in there and then we decided to work around it after that. And now onto the solution for the rocks between the pavers, easy hold. My husband Grant did a ton of research on how to keep the rock in place and it's a type of glue that holds rocks together and if it's done right, you should actually be able to power wash this without the rocks coming out. So he's just mixing the amount they said to with the rock and then carefully pouring it in between the tiles. And he did find out as time went on doing this project that he needed more of the glue than they initially said he would need. So he did go back over this again with the glue and it's been holding up really well. When we walk over this now, the rocks don't fly out at all. It's holding up. He said he's gonna give it a little bit of time and then he might go over it again with another coat of the glue just to make sure it's really set in there. But that looks way more natural and is working so much better than that white rock that was getting kicked all over the place. At this point, we have been working on the yard for four months in our spare time, of course, on weekends and nights, but we're finally getting around to working on this section that is surrounding the orange tree. Our goal here is just to put succulents and drought tolerant plants to make this look very beautiful, but also self-sufficient where we're not having to go in and do a lot over time here. We didn't want to get plants where we would have to plant them every single year. We just want something that's going to fill in and be a one and done for a long time. We did want to have a path to the tree so once it gets bigger we can step up and be able to pick the oranges and my hope obviously is to have a beautiful tall tree here that will give us privacy from staring straight into the neighbor's yard and also give us some added shade and just some tall greenery because right now everything is quite low in this yard so we want to have some tall plants and that's another thing we did was we tried to pick some plants that will grow with varying heights so lower ones and then bushes that will get quite tall and that flax you see there is going to get really really big the one that we planted on the other side has already become about three feet tall so there will be some varying heights as time goes on it has been amazing to watch this backyard transformation happen right before my very eyes and filming it has been wonderful to look back and see how far we've come but i always say that in almost every one of my videos is chipping away at projects really does help you to accomplish a lot over time. And I do a lot of videos about simple living and decluttering our homes. And I hear a lot of people have comments saying that it's too much, it's too hard, but what I always try to share in all my videos is that just doing a little bit at a time uh, really makes the difference. And you can do one thing per day, and by the end of the year, you're going to have transformed your home or your backyard or your amount of clutter that is in your life. And that's what we're doing here. And also, I wanna point out that not everything is perfect. We are trying to make our home and our lives as enjoyable as possible, but we aren't going to let the idea of perfection get in the way. We're going to have a lot of trial and error and learn from that, but also enjoy the process. We decided it would be so fun to add an archway over the path and we're putting that together here. It is not finished by the end of this video, but we have a lot of projects that we're still going to be working on and there will definitely be another video showing all the other things that we're going to accomplish in this yard, like finishing this archway. We're gonna have a plant growing over it. 
We also have the whole other side of our house where we plan to do something with that area. Right now, it is just a whole bunch of dead grass that we want to get rid of. And we have an air conditioning unit back here that we want to cover, but one step at a time. And my husband's from New Zealand, so he's doing a haka here and then a shaka bra because he's a surfer. <laughs> There will be another video showing the finishing touches on this archway as well as the rest of our yard. But here we go with the final before of what our yard used to look like and where we are right now with this yard and how we have transformed it. So I'm just gonna take you around and show you how big all the plants have grown so far just from when we first planted these a few months ago to now and our garden has taken off. We've been eating tons of food from our garden. The tree is already getting bigger. Everything is starting to grow and fill in. And here's an example of how the pergola opens. It's very easy to open and shut this. So if we need to have shade, we close it. And if we want to see the sky, we open it at night. I'm so excited to watch everything fill in and grow. Watch these trees get big and add shade to our backyard. And overall, just watch everything develop over time and see where this yard will be in a year or two. Here I am hanging a strand of lights that we purchased from Costco. We had these in the box in our garage for probably four months now. We could have hung these up, but things just kept happening. So I thought today's the day I'm gonna get out here and hang up these lights. We already had a strand of these hanging under our patio cover that's connected to our house. So I plugged straight into that, pulled it over from the fence, and it wrapped perfectly around this pergola. Lighting is one of those things that can really elevate the way a yard looks. So we decided to add some solar lights so we can hang out outside here at night. We decided to get them off of Amazon. I will link them down below. I read the reviews and my whole goal was to get something bright with just solar power. And eventually we might do some kind of wired lights, but right now we wanted to go off of solar. And these are great. I was really unsure, but I looked at the reviews, as I said, and I looked at the photos that people had put up and we decided to just try these out. When I got up this morning, I opened them up and just put them in the sun. So they had been charging in the sun since early in the morning and it was a really sunny, hot day. So they were able to charge to their full capacity before we put them out in the yard. And then I pretty much just let Grant tell me where he wanted to put them. The goal was to not put them too close to the edge of the planters here because we have young kids and of course, Young kids go around on bikes and scooters and we just didn't want them breaking off or getting hit really easily. So we decided to bring them in a little bit and we also wanted them to give off a glow more than a bright spotlight. We're putting them in and then we will move them if once it's dark and we change our minds. Do one on each side of that trellis in the middle of the arch. I think they will be directionals later on, but for now, yeah. We, we okay, so just two, one on the arch, one there. Yeah. We always do all projects with our backyard and inside our house with the idea that things may change in the future. So obviously as these plants get bigger, we might be moving these lights around and we might be making changes. And as the plants grow, we might even move plants around. So we just always try to have an open mind and we like to be creative. And that's what this backyard is for us. It's a creative outlet. We've put in all the lights except for one. We're gonna wait and see tonight how it looks and then we'll add one. And that will be our determining factor where the light needs to be. We have six of these garden lights is what they're called on the box. And we have six of the spotlights. I think this is a great amount. 
once we had them all lit up at night i think we could add a few more here and there we're gonna wait and see but this is what they look like in the day and as you can see we're probably gonna have to move some of them as these plants grow or keep the plants trimmed down around them and then i just had to add this clip in here this is levi he's one years old and he's enjoying the yard so much he absolutely loves it so this is what the lights look like at night and the camera is not doing this justice. In real life, these give off a really beautiful yellow glow and they make the yard look so nice and transformed. It just gives that extra beautiful feel to our backyard. And the nice thing is that our backyard is now lit up even when we don't have the brighter twinkle lights on, which you can see here that are wrapped around the pergola. We love the way this looks at night now and it feels like we can actually hang out out here because we're not sitting in the dark. Towards the end of 2023, we decided to revisit our fireplace area and add a cozy reading nook. This is a very traditional 1950s looking fireplace with the two small shelves. And when we first moved in here, we painted the whole thing white, but the painter for some reason used a very shiny white, which just made it even less attractive. So we wanted to redo this and add a mantle. We started by knocking off one of the shelves and then my husband designed the mantle. When it comes to projects, I always think safety first. Actually, my husband told me to put all this on, but once I had everything on, I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> We essentially made a plastic room around the fireplace. So when we started to knock off that brick, we would not make dust and debris fly through the whole entire house, which has happened in the past. So I wanted to make sure that we were going to catch all that dust and keep it in one area as we did this project. We removed one of the little shelves and then we kept the other one because that was where the mantle was going to go so it would be covered. We did have to make a structure underneath the final wood piece so it could be sturdy and hold up without falling down if we were to put heavy objects up there. So that's what we were doing here. And this was a certain type of glue that went off really quickly. So we were working together to make this happen as quick as possible before the glue dried and make sure that we were going to get this shelf level. I added several coats of white primer to the brick where we knocked off the shelf and you could not even tell that there had been a shelf there before. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. And then we were unsure of what color we wanted to paint the brick fireplace. So we started with two paint colors that we already had, a dark blue green color, and then also a light gray color. And once I painted both of these patches, we sat with it for a few days and we decided we didn't like either of those colors, but we wanted a color in between the two. So a little bit darker than the light gray and a little bit lighter and a different shade than the dark blue. So that's when we started looking at colors from Home Depot. As I was working on the inside painting and trying to come up with a design, my husband Grant was working on the outer mantelpiece, putting the wood pieces together and designing that whole aspect of the fireplace. And then I finally chose a color. It is called pumice. I can link it down below or give you the exact name down below. At first we were unsure. It's a very muddy green gray color. And over time, once we painted the whole thing and let it dry and looked at it, we were happy with the color and it really warmed up the area. So that was something that we ended up being very happy with, but at first we were a little unsure. And here my husband's putting the final piece on the mantle and it just came together over a few weeks time. 
I have a full blog post about this project over on my blog, shannontorrens.com. I will put the link to that down in the description box where you will find the names of all the paint colors and everything you would maybe have a question about over there. So you can find that again in the description box. Grant is using our paint sprayer to seal the mantle so it won't scratch and it will be water resistant and all of that. And I just feel this is such a beautiful finish. I'm so happy with the way this came out. He is such a great woodworker. I wish I had these skills that he has as a finished carpenter, but it just came out beautifully. I couldn't be any happier with the way this looks. I've just added these chairs that we normally have in our other sitting room over here so I could get the feel of what it would be like to have two chairs here. And it also helped me to realize that these chairs are way too big for this area, but that I do like the feel of having a little sitting area in here. We also added the art back onto the walls that we had on here before we painted this. And I think it was looking a little too crowded over here where I want to have this lamp that I got from the thrift store. So I just took this down. I will find a different place for this and then patch that up. Now I can put these chairs back where they go. Our walls are plaster and not drywall in about 90% of our house. There's a few drywall walls, but whenever we put a nail into plaster, it just explodes when you take it out. My mom told me a trick that I should use with tape, so I'll probably be doing that from now on, but I had to patch those walls up. Now we're just moving the table to a different location. Previously, this whole room really consisted of our dining room table, and we were kind of sick of that. We wanted more of a cozy vibe in this room, and we also wanted to split this room up a little bit and not just have it be a humongous dining room room. This is such a huge room. So that's what gave us the idea to have more of a sitting area and then have a dining area and just break this room up a little bit since it is such an odd layout. I tried to find as many things as I could secondhand at the antique stores and the thrift stores, but at some point I just want to get a project done. So I ended up ordering this mirror off of Wayfair. It came within two days and Grant just pre-hung it before we put the mantle on just to see how it would go. And now he's attaching the mantle and he's caulking around the edges and getting it all sealed up so I can do the final touches with the paint. We did decide to get rid of this rug. We still have it at this point, it's in our garage, but we're not going to need it in this room anymore. We decided to not have a rug under our dining room table anymore, and we will eventually get a smaller rug to go under the sitting area that we're making here. So it all happens with time. Not everything can be done um, on the first step of a project, but we were able to find two really nice chairs. They were from the clearance section at Mathis Brothers. Again, I spent so much time looking for secondhand chairs and we went to thrift stores and I looked on Facebook Marketplace and I could not find anything that was in good condition that was affordable and that went with our style. So anyhow, we ended up purchasing new chairs. I'm extremely happy with these and I can't believe they were on clearance. So we did get a really good deal on them as well, but I'm just putting them together here and you can see the real chaos that happens in our house. It's not always just light music and <laughs> rainbows and butterflies. It's a lot of craziness. We do have three boys. So I'm making the chairs here and thank goodness I have my mom here to help me a lot of the time. And um, just with these projects and also with my boys, she is just such a huge help. And I know you guys love to see my mom in the videos as well. And so she's here with me as we're doing this. And then I also have my little helper, Levi, here. He loves to be involved in everything that I do while my other two boys are having the best time ever making forts out of the boxes that the chairs came in. So there's always a highlight to every project and those boxes were definitely the highlight for my boys. They spent hours playing forts and everything else with those boxes. 
A lot of projects take a while because there's so many little detailed things that have to happen. Now I'm just painting over the paintable caulking and it took a long time, but I used a really tiny brush so I didn't have to tape anything off, which I actually couldn't have taped it off because it's wiggly around the mantle, but I also used this tiny paintbrush to get into every little um, nook and cranny on these bricks. It was almost impossible to paint this with a larger brush because it just did not get into the little cracks and divots. Since I had the paint out to cover up the little areas where I patched the wall, I thought, why not paint this corner where a lot of little dirty handprints get smudged on the wall and it looks so much better. We found this lamp at a thrift store for $17, but I really don't like this lamp shade. It has lots of stains and it's the wrong color. We went to Lamps Plus the other day and I was able to find this more modern lampshade. So I'm going to switch this out. I love this color so much more than the creamy, yellow, dirty lampshade. Okay. My mom is letting us borrow this orange ottoman to see if we like having something here. And the good thing is this actually opens up and becomes a table. Oh, that's cool. You could put your soda there. We're not sure if we want to have a little coffee table here or an ottoman or what, yeah. or even anything. So this is awesome that we can try this out. And you said you weren't using it. No, I'm not using it. It's just been put yeah. aside. I like it, but we so don't maybe I'll use buy it. it from you if I like it. Okay, five dollars. Okay, that's a good deal. <laughs> we have two of these side tables or buffets, whatever we want to call it here. And I think this would look way better over there, and the other one would look better over here. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the big switcheroo, there we go. and we'll see how it looks. Ta-da! For the decorations up here, I just gathered few plants from around my house just for now until I know what I want to have here and I found these candlestick holders at a thrift store so that was exciting. I took this plant from a different shelf and it might go back there I'm not sure but I really like the way it looks here. Another thrift store find. Our goal here was again just to make a cozy space where we could sit, enjoy reading a book that was separate from the TV room. And I feel that we've accomplished this. Our style is pretty unique and eclectic, but I seriously love it. Make sure you're subscribed because I will be continuing to work on this room as well as all the other DIYs that we're doing around our house. I absolutely love the way this turned out. Some of the things I still want to do are get a rug in here and just make a few little changes to the art, things like that. It's so fun to take our time on these projects and slowly update our home through the years with every renovation we do and project we work on. We are figuring out our style and making this house into a really cozy home that functions and works for our family. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button to join my channel. I would love to have you as part of my community and I will leave some videos up here on the screen so you can continue watching and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!